Alhamdulillah. Uh, we welcome us back to the hall for the last uh, lecture for today and for this edition of uh, Knowledge Builder course. And it is the concluding part of the book we have been dealing with uh, about the Nawakilul Islam modifiers of uh, Islam. So this has to do with the rulings regarding jest, intent, fear, and compulsion. If anybody is guilty of any of the Nawakid as a result of a jest being intentional or out of fear or being compared so what is the ruling concerning this? So that's the talk we are about to listen to. Inshallah, we invite uh, stars to come and begin the lecture. By way of um, concluding the discourses on Nawakidul Islam, the book by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, at Tamimi Rahimahullah. After reading through the first or uh, the ten uh, the ten points on the matters that invalidate a person's Islam, the Sheikh says, "Rahimahullah, wala farqa fi jamii hadhi nawaqid bain al hazil wal jad wal khaif illa al mukra, wala farqa fi." Can have children memorize it. Wala farqa fi jami'i hadhihi al-nawafid bayna al-hazili wal-jadi wal-khaif illa al-bukra wa kulluha min a'zami ma yakunu khatara wa akthari ma yakunu wukua fa yambaghi lil-muslimi an yahdara an yahdaraha wa yakhafa minha ala nafsih أعوذ بالله من مودبات غضبه وعليم عقابه صلى الله على محمد 
sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The Sheikh says, wala farqa fi jami'i hazihi nawafi. The entirety of these invalidators of a person's Islam. Jami'u hadihi nawaqit. All these ten things that we have mentioned that invalidate a person's Islam. La farqa fi jami'i hadihi nawaqit. There is no difference regarding all and each of these nawaqit. So he mentioned three persons here, three groups of people. The first one, Al Hazil. The second one, Al Jad. The third one, Al Khaif. The first one, Al Hazil. Who is the Hazil? Al Hazil is Al Qasid Lil Faili. The one who is hazel is al qasidu lil faith. Someone who loves, someone who deliberately does something. Someone who does something, who loves or says something. Zahiran. In the open, yes, that's what he has said. La batina. But inside him, he does not mean what he has said. Al Hazim. He does not mean what he has said. You know, people who say what they don't mean, they make that be a joke. They say, well, I'm just joking. I don't mean it. It's a joke. So that's why the Hazim is also referred to someone who is a uh, joke. Yes, he will say something or act something. So he intends to say it apparently, openly. But in the battle, that's not what he intends. So if someone jokingly does any of these things, there is no difference between his saying, oh, I was joking or he was serious. So this is al Hazim, someone who is joking. He will say something and everybody will laugh. Ha, ha, ha. So when they ask him, what do you mean? Are you saying, say, no, I just said it to him. I was just joking. What does that mean? Yes, he actually said it. He intended to say it, but inside him, he was not intending the meaning of what he has said. Sometimes when people make statements, I say, you mean it? Say, yes, I mean it. Then we know the heart is a serious matter. This kind of a person is the judge. Al Hazilu is the one, is Al Qasidu Lil Fail. He intends the action, he intends the statement, Zahira, in the open. But Laba, inside him, in his mind, he does not intend what he has said. He does not mean what he has said. This kind of a person is called what? Al Hazilu. The second person, Al Jadu, someone who is serious. And that is the person who, Aladi Qasad Al Fila, who love Zahira Wabat. He actually means what he has said openly and inside him. What he has said or what he has acted, yes, that's what he means. Someone who, the worshiper of an idol, and the one who seeks to worship an idol, thinking that he's joking. There's no difference between the two of them. So how about our own politicians who say, oh, we are just playing politics. There's no difference between someone who says he's joking. And the one who is actually serious, there's no difference. Don't say to me that you are a Muslim, Alaji, Abdul Razak, Abdul Fatah, so to speak. And then you are prostrating before an idol. Where you are asked, why you say no, we are just joking. I can't imagine. May Allah protect us. Or you are making a jest with a thing from the religion. 
Why are you making, what are you making a jest? I know I was just joking. I wasn't serious. There's no difference between that. And that was what you find in the story in Surah to Tawbah, where the people were jesting with those who were making Kiyamun lay. All these affairs, you are cowards. Some people said that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with a battle, up on a battle, we mentioned it yesterday. So some people were saying, ah, oh, we're just joking. And Allah told us about this. Wala in sa'alta hum, la yakullunna inna ma kunna nakhudu wa nal'abu. Wala in sa'alta hum. If you ask them, are you, are you, what are you saying? Who are you making just to say, inna ma kunna nakhudu wa nal'abu. Nakhud, al-khawd fil kalam, just, we are just jisting. When Abu, we are just joking. Oh, we are not serious. We are just joking here. Allah says, Qul, say to them, O Muhammad, Sallam, Abillahi wa ayatihi wa rasulihi kuntum tastahziun. Is it Allah or his messenger or his verses in the Quran that you are joking with? La ta'taziru. Don't ask. Don't look for excuses. Qad kafartum ba'da imanikum. You have become disbelievers despite the fact that before that time you were believers. That meant that that joke is a, it's not accepted as a joke. It's a joke that still landed them into Kufu. Meaning that there are some jokes people joke with that will land the people into Kufu. Jokes. Joke. Let me give us another example of a dangerous joke, even though it does not involve don't joke with your wife that you have divorced her. Don't joke that joke. Because it has a ruling of seriousness. The Prophet said so, alayhi salatu. The jindun fi ha salasu, au salasatu. Jindun fi ha jindun. Wa hazun fi ha jindun. There are three things. Jindun fi ha jindun. The seriousness regarding them is seriousness. And the jokes regarding them is seriousness. When you are serious, serious. When you are joking, serious. Nikah and talak. You can't joke with a brother. The brother can say, ah, Baba Aisha, I say, ah, yes, how are you? Marry Aisha to him, say, I marry her to you. You are married to get to him. Don't joke married with your daughter to another brother. If he knows the Sharia very well, he will come one day and tell you, hey, we are ready to carry our wife. You will then be asking, which wife? And as far as the religion of Allah is concerned, that girl, that girl is the husband, the wife of that man. That is where ignorance has landed in man. We don't joke regarding marriage. Likewise, don't joke regarding talaq. Don't tell your wife in a joke, I divorce you. Um, we are just looking at you. I will, not, I will throw you out. In fact, I throw you out. You just say, hey, okay, will you give me some women? They say, but in Sharia, if you divorce a woman, you should give, him more. You should give her money now. So give me 10 million, you will divorce me. Just, I'll give you, say, I divorce me, I'll give me 10 million. You know women? <laughs> You'll be calculating what to do with the 10 million your nikah is more expensive than 10 million. May Allah protect all of us. The point is that don't joke with Allah. Likewise, don't go and meet your husband. Divorce me if you want to divorce me. Don't try that kind of a joke. Don't do that with your husband. So the wife should not ask for khulhu jokingly. Likewise, the husband should not divorce actually his wife jokingly. Because it has the ruling of a full divorce. As you feel hajidu. Likewise, Iman. Don't joke with your Iman. That's the meaning. It says, Wala farqa fi jami'i hadihin nawaqid. There is no difference regarding all, each and all of these nawaqid. Bain al hazihi. Regarding a person who says he's joking. Wal jad. And a person who is actually serious. 
wal khaif and a person who says ah is afraid if he does not make a statement of kufur his wealth his possession or his reputation is at stake he does not accept he does not make this statement he does not make a joke maybe he is in a place with the people who make a joke and he too is making a joke they are joking over who they call eleha and he's joking too he will feel that if he does not do that joke then it means that uh, maybe his job is threatened many brothers you know they can sack you if you don't <laughs> let them sack you because what you are afraid of is something that has to do with money or reputation if it is regarding these two things and you make a statement of kufur it is kufur or you make a jest of kufur it is kufur or you make sihr say okay you want to do a prank they call it prank that will be an expensive prank for you if you make a prank of sihr was a prank your friend's cap will leave his head so like the brother from worry let his cap be fly like this so you run in after it when he gets it and puts it on you say ah na me do am i just want to show you say this cup stop so la farq bay fi jami'i hadhihi nawaqid bayna hazili wal jad wal khaif the person who is serious the person who is joking the person who is afraid of wealth and reputation this area of wealth and reputation is very common someone will make a statement and could be want to protect his web wealth he wants to protect his reputation it's cool go back to the 10 all of them if you do them no matter any of these three it is cool for the sheikh says the only person who will do this any of this thing that will not be considered as kufur is illa al-mukrah a person who is truly compelled don't confuse khaif and mukrah khaif is just afraid that he may lose money or he may lose a reputation do you know why the uncle of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam abu talib did not accept islam openly even though he acknowledge the truth of islam inwardly its reputation reputation he wanted to accept and his two friends were telling you want to leave the god what so ala billati abdul muttalib he declared for the parts of abdul muttalib shaiba to hamd the apada upon shirk and kufr so that the people of quraish will not abuse him his reputation reputation so some people will be shy to declare that something is wrong even though it, it is not an issue of kufr but many people are shy to say and express and affirm islam because they are shy of their reputation i don't want anybody to abuse me here i don't want anybody. even on social media brothers are afraid to affirm the truth they say they are shy they don't want people to abuse them they are afraid of your reputation so if a person makes a statement of kufur because he's afraid of reputation or he's afraid of losing some wealth it is different from someone whose life is actually threatening a man has a, a, a rope on his neck and a gun on his head I had declared a statement of kufur now and he is sure that if he does not do it he will be killed he can make the statement of kufur wa qalbuhu mutmainun bil iman while his heart is firm and tranquil upon what upon iman this is al mukra the one who is under compulsion some people give themselves imaginary compulsion 
Don't put yourself on that. This is usually under her if he's afraid that he can lose his house, can lose his car, can lose his wealth, he can lose his reputation. And because of that, he gives a statement of Kufu. La, if he gives a statement of Kufu, jokingly or seriously or out of fear of losing property or reputation. That statement holds as a statement of kufu from him. It's kufu from al Bukrah is the only person that is exempted. The one who is truly compelled. And that's why talak under compulsion is invalid. If a man is held on his head, oh yeah, divorce your wife now, now, now. And he says, I divorce you. The, wife, the woman is still his wife. May Allah protect all of us. So, the Sheikh says, "Wala farq fi jami'i hadhihi nawaqid bain al-hazili wal-jadi wal-khaif illa al-mukrah." He says, "Wa kulluha and all of these nawaqid min aghmi ma yakun khatara. They are from the most dangerous of the things that can ever be." The most dangerous of things you can find. Wallahi, from the most dangerous of things you can find is that a Muslim involves a shirk or sihr. Very, very dangerous. Sihr is very dangerous. Sihr is very dangerous. Because he even begins to think himself to be very powerful. So that's why they continue to look for more power, quote unquote. More power means more collaborations with more, more dangerous genes, which would mean more dangerous sacrifices of shirk. Someone, they told him, come into one bush in Iselo. Who knows what is or where is Iselo? You must know Iselo. There are a lot of forests in those areas. So you come to one forest there. When you are moving, turn right, turn left. When you turn left, just come. The one thing will be telling him, move right, he moves right, move left, he moves left. Until he gets to the place where those people have said to him, they say, take this pot. Make sure the pot does not break. You say yes, sir. Sometimes you will not even be able to say yes, sir. He will just be shaking his head because himself is still consuming fear. To handle the pot and bring it home. They can tell him to swallow it. He'll be wondering whether he can swallow it. Things like this. So all these things are very, very dangerous. Or some people can say, no, that's very fetish. That's very fetish. The next thing is that when they tell you about it, they say, no, 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 no. We're in a civilized world. Everybody has a choice. Every Kufu too has a choice. There's no choice for Kufu. In the, in the deen of Allah or in the land of Allah, one of our elders will say, if you don't like Islam, go out of the earth of Allah and don't stay under the heavens of Allah. Go out of the earth of Allah if you don't like Islam and don't stay under the heaven of Allah. Where will he go to? That is the way we don't have a choice but to submit in Islam. You don't have a choice. Where will you go to? So all these things are very dangerous to that to your peaceful existence on the earth. No matter what you have. I was just giving a message regarding a young boy. He said at 24, he had a company online, over $600 million. He sold it to Microsoft at the age of 24. Please, 600 times 500, how much is that? <laughs> oh, it's embarrassing to bring it to Nairobi. Very, very. Very, very embarrassing. <laughs> he sold the company 624 million US dollars. One million US dollars, 500 million naira. 
to 500 and 624. It's embarrassing to calculate that money in Naira. Okay. That was when he was 24 years old. Shortly after that, he had a second company he sold to Amazon at $1.2 billion. That boy, come. he made, he made, you say he has made healthy he make here. Abi, he committed suicide. He died of suicide because he could not find happiness. So it is not dollars that bring happiness. Wallahi. 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 It's not dollars that bring happiness. If it is dollars that bring happiness, the present president of the United States of America should be one of the happiest people in the world. He's stupendously rich and then he has power and authority. The, as they say, the most powerful country on earth, as they say. But yet, if I say, is he happy now? I am sure I will, I will get a unanimous answer. Will I not get a unanimous answer? So what is it that brings happiness? Allah, Wallahi. I tell you this. I tell you this. When Allah makes you understand what Iman is, Wallahi, you, grab, you have tranquility, you have rest of mind. You have rest of mind. Your mind, your life will be peaceful. You'll be able to walk freely on the street. So all these issues, they are issues of danger, shirk, supporting the kufar against the Muslims. And these other issues that we have mentioned. The Sheikh says, Wa min ma yakunu. But as dangerous as each of them is, they are the much of what people fall into. But a lot of people fall into these issues. As dangerous as they are, people still fall into them. So he says, Rahimahullah, it is therefore unavoidably necessary for the Muslim to avoid these matters. Avoid them. Be careful about them. Beware of them. And not think that he's free. It cannot happen to me. No. You must be running away so that it does not uh, affect you. You must be running away. I, I hope. May Allah not make this to affect me. May Allah not make Look at, we all now tie something on our noses because we are afraid for ourselves. How about being afraid for our own Iman? That is by way of avoiding all these matters. The Sheikh ended and said, Na'udhu billahi min mujibati ghadabihi wa alimi iqabihi. We ask the refuge of Allah, min mujibati ghadabihi, from the things that necessitates that Allah is angry with us. Because wallahi, anyone who is a kafir and dies upon kufur, Allah is angry with him. وَغَضِبَ wa اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَانَهُمْ وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ فَسَادْ مَصِيرًا Allah is angry with people who, are, who die and pass away from this dunya as non-Muslims. Of any form, whether as a Christian or a Jew or a polytheist or an atheist, or a free thinker. Every other way of life that a person lives and passes away from this dunya and is not upon Islam, Allah is angry with you. And you will know by the time you get into your grave. Wallahi. In fact, from the point of death, he begins to Appearance. 
our daughters, our sons, our wives, our children, and every other person around us. We need to help them get out of these matters if they are already falling into it. It means we will not be finding any woman from amongst us here or man or anybody listening to us who will think that one day he has a problem. The way the problem will be solved is that he's going to want Baba somewhere in one bush or something like that. Because he knows the consequence of what he is doing. So the Sheikh says, Naruzu billahi min mojibati al-Badabihi. We beg Allah to grant us refuge away from the things that make him become annoyed. Wa alihi iqabihi. And his very severe punishments. May Allah protect us from these two things. He ended by saying salat from the Prophet Muhammad. He said, Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad. So we say to Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. I think it's good to stop here, inshallah. So we can accommodate questions for the rest of the time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay. There's a question here that came since the morning. And it's a, an Alakawi question. It says, my question is about technological invention of this 21st century, having a relationship with magic and sorcery. That is, what's the relationship between these inventions and magic and sorcery? The person said, I came across lectures explaining that the modern day technology has some magical origin through their inventors, that some of the inventors got some sort of um, inspiration, so to speak, from genes or something, to engaging in secret cults and learning sorcery and incantation and employing genes. Can that be the reason why people are... So the question is, if given, given that, you know those equations, given that. <laughs> because it may not be given. So but given that, so given that, that was the background to these discoveries. Can that be the reason why people are being attacked through WhatsApp or why people get over engrossed and deluded through technology. Can that be the reason? Giving that. So let's first of all investigate that giving before we give. Giving that, giving not that, you know? So let's address giving not that or not giving that. Is it actually true that these inventions came through that? For example, I can speak in the microphone. And this voice can be heard in speakers there. That it could have come from a magic. Well, I find it a bit strange. Why? Because these things are simple physical processes that are explicable. When I was explaining, I told us, if a person says a bottle of water turns to blood, what is it? Process that can bring make us understand that. I will even mention that can there be rays that when those rays come to that water, it can turn the water to blood. If there are rays like that, that we know they have both white and red blood uh, cells and corpuscles, is it? And some oxygen. What else is in blood? White and red blood cells. And what? Water. Plasma. The plasma. If we have a ray that can transfer these things into that bottle of water and convert it, and then there must be a process of conversion. If it can be proven physically and the process can be repeated, it has gone out of something you can call second because the process is understood and seen and clear to be a physical process. That is the same thing about technology. Technology is science. It means it can be proven. You can see it in the lab. You can, you can do it again and again. 
You can bring it up. You can see it. So there is no hidden cause of an effect. If the cause is not seen by the face, it can be seen under microscopes of various magnifications. So there is no, there is no magic about it. There is no magic that I'm speaking like this. If you put up this electricity now, I come and speak on the phone, and then we can see there, we start thinking about magic. But there's a process, physical process, phenomenon, an interplay of various things that we see the effect in that when you speak in the microphone, it is head there. Even the telephones we use, are they not waves? We can't see the waves, but we can feel it. We can sense them. And sensing is one of the ways of feeling it. And those waves are the causes for the broadcast that we make. So these are clear cuts, provable things. They are not strange. They are, they, are not, they are just like the way you go to the market, you buy gari and cook it. It's a process, it's a chemical process. Making gari is a chemical process. Make, turning amala is a chemical process. Isn't it a chemical process? The soup you make is a chemical process. So someone now says, oh, it was one gene who taught us how to cook soup. Ah, then thank you to that gene. Thank you to the gene. But this, the thing, this matter itself is a clear cut matter. There's a connection between the cause and what? The effect. So likewise, all other technological things. So the issue of who suggested it to him, how did he know it? It's something else. But the, the thing itself, there's a direct connection between cause and effect. It can be proven, it can be repeated, it can be shown. So we say the matter comes under the issues of science and technology, not about witchcraft and their magic. So it is not given. Do we understand that our equation? Given that, we say no, it is not given that. The premise upon which the question was based is not correct. I'm sure uh, science based people would have understood what I say more. Allah Allah. But as for why do people now become engrossed in it? Is that because of magic to know? It's also science. Psychology is a science based course. You find people reading government and economics. When you have to say, I want to do psychology. So you don't know what you are doing. Psychology is a science. The science of how people behave and think. It's psychology. That's why they learn a lot of biology and a lot of chemistry. Because there's an interplay of the two in the human mind. How does the human mind work? Let me tell us three things they observe in all these their apps. Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter that they have done. They studied our mindset. All human beings like to be praised. Every person likes to be praised. So put an icon there. When you write something there, let people be able to be praising you. You will like to come back. If you say, do a post and everybody say like, 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 between one hour, you have 1,000 likes. You'll be thinking about the next post. Is a normal human, is a, is a phenomenon, is a science. This is how the human mind works. It's not about making the human mind do something that it cannot do. No, this is the normal thing about the human mind. It's like saying making the mouth to talk. Mouth is created to talk. So the human mind has a nature. What is it? It likes to be praised. Arabs have an adage that jubilat in nafsu and to habiba man osina ilaiha. The human mind is created to like someone who does good to it. That's why I say, sister, when a brother approaches her, say, me, can. I can't marry you. I can't do this. Let the brother just package $1,000. Send it to her. <laughs> I didn't say night out. <laughs> I tell you this. Let her be the son of uh, anybody and then block all her numbers. She will look for another number to call you. <laughs> you know what the topic will be? I just want to say Jazak <laughs> Allah.
That Jazakallah khairah is not just to remove it just there. Yeah. Just $1,000. Some people's work for one month. One year. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> so the human mind likes to be given gifts. All this as point number two. Human mind likes people who are nice to them. If you are nice to somebody, they can live their life for you. How was it that the companions were ready to lose their life for the Prophet Muhammad? Out of love for him, because they can feel his natural character of goodness. This man is good, alayhi salatu But that love is not this kind of love as the man is good. It's a love that is connected to Iman. So two things hit themselves in their mind. How will that love be? Extraordinary. You didn't hear what Allah said about them. And Nabi you awla bil mu'minina min anfusih. The messenger alayhi salatu salam comes first in the mind of the Muslims than they themselves. So when you are nice to people, Once you finish, they'll bring you another article of banking again. Once you finish, they'll bring you another article of banking again. There are algorithms in, like one of the brothers mentioned, it's in computer, sorry, sir, that studies that thing about you. So they begin to give you the same thing on YouTube. Is that what magic? It's not magic. So you intended to spend five minutes, you spend 15 minutes. In fact, you can spend one hour if you are not there. You can spend the whole day if you are not there. So these are some of the things that lead to being engrossed in them. So what do you need? A high sense of personal discipline. You need personal, you need to be a disciplined human being in this our generation. And you need to teach your children about that too need a very high sense of personal discipline. You need to be a person that he places everything in its place. If you are in an office, you are employed to do a work. You're in the office, you are browsing Facebook and WhatsApp and Twitter. It's wrong Islamically. Because that time, you are supposed to work with it. A teacher with a, some young girls in a school reported a teacher to me. They said, you start when he comes, he's pressing Facebook, he's pressing, he's checking WhatsApp. This is supposed to be totally in. You are, you are watching WhatsApp and Facebook at the time of a class. And then you collect the salary. After that, you come and start talking about Jafu Watadi in Anta Majuru. You come and collect your salary, but you are not working. You could even place your leg on the chair. Students will look at you like this and say, Subhanallah. So walk to Wazifa, how do you arrange that with Allah? The students have a right. The school itself has a right on you. Because you are not going to remove the times you are not working. Why? People lack a good sense of what? Of, of personal discipline. You have to discipline. Otherwise, this thing can carry people to where they don't expect. There are other things I could have given as an example, but I think this sufficiently answers that question. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah.
and lots of time we will not be able to take more questions. But we want to uh, give a little sort of a solution to having a lot of problems, having a lot of questions without the main answer. So we are trying to create some of these questions that have not been answered, and questions will be answered. And Thanks to all the participants uh, in KDC. So the questions that are not answered will be answered. I will send them to all the participants via their email, inshallah. So if you know that you don't have your email with us, as well as when you register, please kindly leave your email behind. You. But this is not the end of the uh, program. We still have a uh, uh, a closing remarks to be made by by the acting entity head of the new communication now. So please let's uh, be patient to listen to the closing remarks and shall now we uh, then uh, make an announcement of some other things that we uh, want to do. So. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا والسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الحمد لله بنعمته التتيم الصالحة All praises due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى in whose name and in whose permission righteous actions are accomplished um, at the point that we are thinking of holding this KBC we were between two um, different um, spectrum should we hold it? Should we, shouldn't we hold it? Should we hold it online? Should we hold it offline? It's for our issues that um, were competing, um, that we were debating behind. Um, Alhamdulillah, even though um, we try as much as possible uh, in this circumstance of the COVID-19, um, the point is that COVID-19 is real. Nobody should uh, think that it is unreal. So what we need to do is to take personal responsibilities for our safety and ensure that we take precautions. But as well, we also owe ourselves the um, duty to live our life as normal as possible while taking those precautions. So um, we thought that it is possible. It is possible for us to take those precautions uh, and try to um, take care of our safety as well as do whatever we want to do. So this one gave us some kind of confidence to go ahead to actually host this particular program. But alhamdulillah, um, alhamdulillah, we were in proof wrong. So we thought that it is possible, and we have come to the end of um, this KDC. The other reason is, um, why did we actually choose this particular topic? Nawafid al-Islam, the nullifiers of Islam. One singular reason why we decided to choose this particular topic is that, in spite of its importance, in spite of its significance, and in spite of its um, danger that it poses to uh, the email of many people, a lot of people do not understand 
do not know, those who know do not understand what this Nawakid al Islam are. So we thought that it is important to remind ourselves of this. And if you, you would have various experiences that will validate this particular point. I have personal experiences that actually validate this particular point. The reason why we decided to um, choose this particular topic. Some years back, I went for Hajj. I was in the same room with an elderly man in Mecca. And we got talking, me and the, this elderly man, we got talking. So the man told me that um, the man is from, from Oyo. So he's, he told me that there was a time when his father died. And um, his younger ones, he's the most senior of the family. So his younger ones gathered together and said that they want to um, throw a party in honor of the departure of their father. And the man said their decision came at the worst time for him. As the head of the family, he is supposed to um, show the way by taking up certain responsibilities and ensuring that the ceremony becomes successful. So what did he do? It came at the time when he had no power. So the man said, man, you know what I did? After they had all gone, we saw, I said, okay, no problem. We'll do it. But I didn't have anywhere that I'm going to get the money to do it. So in the morning, in the night, he said, the father was buried behind the house. So in the night, I went to the grave of my father. And I told my father, a don't see for. And he said, I spoke to my dad, my father, in the grave with tears that, ha, ah, this is my young girl, they want to disgrace me. And he said, he went back to the house and went to sleep. The following day, the man said he has a building, an old market in Oyo. Said he has practically almost forgotten about the rest of it because he didn't have any use for it. He said the following day, the experts, some experts came. And said, that, and said they wanted to lease the place. They leased the place and they gave him a huge amount of money for it. And they said, Baba Moro, you know. Hmm. Say, my father, I see your hand. Now the point is, I tried to convince him, I, I argued to him that this is from the tricks of Shaitan. And this is shirk. That you don't do things like that. I'm not sure the man was convinced with my own you know, argument. So it actually formed one of the basis for the decision to actually um, do this topic. And you find out that many people, many people fall prey into one or, or sometimes even all of this, all of this nawakid, all of this non-nullifiers. Even people use think that they should know. I went for a naming ceremony recently, not too long ago. And um, the way I was living before, it's an, in an estate. So the man who invited me for the naming ceremony, I was the one that was supposed to speak. And um, his wife that gave birth was a Christian, was not a Muslim. Then there's another Malam who is also living close by, who felt that he should have been the one that the man should invite, not me. So he took him uninvited. So both of us sat down. So when I sat down, I was about to begin when he came and sat by my side. So after I finished speaking, he got up. I said, she wants to speak. 
Some part saying whatever he wanted to say. He said, if you are practicing Christianity, go ahead and practice your Christianity. If you are a practicing Muslim, go ahead and practice Muslim, practicing Islam. Between Christianity and Islam, the only difference between the two of them is two people going in the, the same direction and taking two different roads. This is supposed to be a man. So the point is that if this one does not understand, what do you think about those people who are listening to you? So you can understand. In fact, from all this, you should be able to figure out which part of these nullifiers of Islam that they are contravening, they are contravening. If you actually pay attention to all the, the scholars have mentioned for the past three days, then come to some, to someone, a lady, just about last week, I was reading. The lady said, if I was not born a Muslim, I will not choose Islam. Said, she said, if I was not born a Muslim, I will not choose Islam as a religion. Do you know that statement takes her out of the fold of Islam? That statement? She may assume that the statement is very light. But the assume it to be something that is very light. But in the sight of Allah, it is something that is very serious. So this is the case with so many people. So many people. And how many times do you also find that people discuss this issue? Discuss this matter of Nawak and Islam. In spite of people, we assume that they are Muslims, but then maybe they have already crossed the road. So this is why we thought that it is critical for us to remind ourselves. And um, we also thought that it is important for us to also, after listening, provide a, a companion, something like we can go back and read over. That is why we got the book also prepared, you know, for that purpose, so that it can reinforce whatever the mind of humans uh, sometimes when we are in a particular session, we, our mind could be very you know, attentive and when we go and we begin to also um, um, mix and also our mind gets busy again, we forget. So, but then inshallah when we have this book, it will be a case for us and for us to always go back and read and get reminded. So. So this is the reason why we uh, decided to hold this particular case. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it as a proportion for you and from us as well. Um, we want to thank you for your patience and we want to thank you for your cooperation. And um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward every one of us. May he come our effort with success in this world and success in the hereafter. We thank everybody who they the parts in making this a success. There are so many people who are personally concerned about ensuring that this particular program went very well. Uh, people who brought, you know, uh, donations to ensure that okay, let's we want this to go well. We want it to go well. So um, sincerely, for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, may Allah not deny you the reward. And um, also, um, I'm sure that we wonder that how much are you paying for all the KBC that um, we come for the KBC, you give us a book, you also provide food for us. There are actually one of us here who took charge of that food. One person who said, who approached us and said, how many people are we expecting for the KBC? We told him um, a number that we're expecting and he said, let me provide food for them for all the three days. And it is so, alhamdulillah. And you will agree with me that it's not just ordinary food that is breaking. 
it is a food that is really, I mean, uh, what to me, Allah rewarded. May Allah replenish him and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, accept him from him as a proportion. And um, we want to use this opportunity to remind them, um, to also remember our brother, Mudafat Sanus, um, who um, the last two years was probably was here as well. What I'm doing now, he will have been the one that will do it. You know, but then, this is the way it's going to be. We came one by one, and we are going to go one by one. But what is more important is that while we were here, what did we do? This is a more important thing. So, how long are we going to be here for? That one is out of our hands. The fact that you are here was out of your hand. You didn't choose to come. It is not a matter of choice. This is Allah's decision. And when you are going to leave, it is going to be squarely the decision of Allah. But there's something that is within your own decision. The right way or the wrong. You do the right, as um, uh, the man quoted in the Surah Al-Mulk, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِهَدِ الْمُلْقِ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ كَبِرٍ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبِلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا You know? Are you going to die? Spit it away, it will come. Oh, you are alive now. It is a trial. Are you going to do one? Well? So, doing that which is right all the time is the basic responsibility that we have. So, we ask Allah's hand that whatever we do that we find is right, we Allah accept it from us. And wherever we go wrong, we Allah forgive us our sins. So, um, we also want to. We also had some other you know, people who assisted us, especially this um, public address system that we're using. We felt that we needed to do up something in the KBC because um, in the past we had issues with um, public address system, people complaining that we cannot hear properly at the time. But alhamdulillah, um, this that they gave to us to use. Um, see that I said that many people actually contributed into making this uh, recording success. May Allah reward everyone. May Allah accept it from everyone. <laughs>